Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over JLabel from the Java Swing framework. JLabel is defined as a display area that holds a text, an image, or both. So the point of this video will be to demonstrate an overview of the JLabel class in which I'll demonstrate and go over all the things you can do with it. Without further ado, let's begin. Before we begin, I forgot to mention that for all of the videos in this series, since we're going to be using the Swing framework, we're going to be importing this package here, the javax.swing. Dot asterisk. So if you're going to use a different IDE like VS Code, just make sure to add this and yeah. All right. So to show you the label, we first need a window to add our label onto. So I'm just going to paste this JFrame code. And what this JFrame code does is that it's instantiating a window and creating an initial size of 500 by 400 pixels. And then we make sure that it renders or displays at the center of screen every time we launch the program. And after that, we set the default close operation to exit on close, which basically means that if we close the window, it's going to end the process or the program. And I go over this in the JFrame video. So if you want a further explanation or a deeper dive into it, and you can check it out right here at the top right. Or in the description below. So now that we have our JFrame set up, we can create our JLabel object and we'll pass in this text here as a parameter, which will be the text that will be displayed when we add this label to our window. So now we're going to add the label to our window, and to do that, we call on the add method from the JFrame class. And then lastly, let's not forget to make the window visible so that when we launch the app, the window will appear on our screen. Now let's launch the app. So here we can see our label on our frame or our window where it says hello world and it's the same text that we passed in when we created our JLabel object. Feel free to replace this text with your own text to see what happens. All right, let's just close this for now. So with the JLabel, not only can you add text, but you can also add images to it. So first we'll need an image and you can use any image you want. So any image you can find on the internet or in your computer. But for me, um, if you're gonna, if you want to follow the image that I'm using, I left a link to the Google Drive here where you can download this Earth PNG. And then once you're here, just click on this download button. So then just save it somewhere you'll remember. And once it's done, we'll go back to our IDE. So first we're going to create a package here in our source folder. We're going to right click it and then we're going to then click on package. And then we're going to type in resources. So now we have a resource packages. This is where we're going to store the images. So locate the image you downloaded. And here I'm just going to drag it and drop it. And then it's going to say to refactor and just hit OK. And yeah, so now our image is in our resources folder and we can access it within our project. Once that's done, we can finally create our image. And to do that, we need to make an image icon object. And in the parameter, we need to pass in the path to our image. So if you're using IntelliJ, you can click on the image here. You can right click it and then click on the copy path reference. And then you're going to click on the path from content Ruth. Then then we're going to go to our parameter here and then we're going to paste it. So to add the image to our J label, we're going to call on the set icon method and pass in the image icon to it. All right. So make sure to move this line of code at the end. And we always want this to be executed last. Because the way it works is that if we set the visibility true before adding the components, it's going to display us a window without the components with it. So calling it at the end ensures that all the components will be displayed properly. So now let's launch our app. And there we go. We have our picture here and then the text here. So all right, let's close this for now. All right, so now let's say you want to change the text of the label. And we can do that by calling on the set text method and then passing in the string that we want the text to change into. So let's launch the code now. And yeah, so our text changed from hello world to goodbye. All right, but it looks kind of off, right? What happens if we want our text to be centered or over here or over there? And we can do that. So let's close this for now. And so first let's align the text to be centered horizontally. And we can do that by calling the set horizontal text position method and passing in the value of jlabel.center. And if you don't want it to be centered, you, you can also position the text to the left or to the right. And I'll show you an example of all three right now on the screen. But for this example, we're going to go with center. And then let's launch it. It's kind of hard to see, but the text is like right here. So before you saw that the text was here, now we moved it so that it's centered towards the image. 
All right, so let's try to move it vertically now. And you probably have guessed it already, but instead of saying set horizontal text position, we call on the set vertical text position where we can pass in J label center, top, oops, top or bottom. And I'll show you all three on the screen right now. For this one, let's try bottom. And yeah, so the text appears at the bottom. I'm going to switch it back to center just so that we don't have to resize the screen every time to see it. Yeah, so it's, it's already centered, but it's all right. So as we saw earlier, the text was kind of hard to see. So let's try changing the color to make it a lot more visible. And there are multiple ways that we can do this. So to change the color of the text, we're going to call on the set foreground method and then pass in a color type object. In this case here, we're going to be using a built the built in colors of the color class. And there's a variety of colors you can choose from. We can go red, blue, green. There's a lot of colors that it's built in with the color class. But for this one, we're going to be using white and it's because it's easier to see. So let's check it out now. Yeah, so we can kind of see it better. It's just a little bit too small. So I'm going to show you the other two ways of creating our colors. Just in case you don't want to use the built-in color classes or the built-in colors from the color class, you can use your own color as well. So the second way of passing in a color is we could use a hex code. And here we're going to call on the decode method of the color class and pass in the hex value of our color. So here's the color picker. And let's just choose a random color, like let's go with CN and then just move it around a bit. So here we could have our hex code, hex, hex color. Actually, let's choose a color that's more visible or at least that looks a lot different than white just so that we can see the difference. So let's choose something like red, All right? So something like, I think that should be good enough. So let's copy and paste this hex code and then paste it right here. And don't forget this hashtag. All right, so now let's launch it. And yes, if you look really, really close, the color looks a bit red. So that's another way of creating your own color. And the last method I want to show you is using RGBA, which is red, green, blue, and alpha. And to do that, we're going to be creating a new color object where you pass in the red, green, blue, and alpha values. So let's bring up our color picker again, and let's choose a different color, like how about green this time? And we're just going to move it around and make it really bright. And here we have the RGB, RGB colors. So let's just copy this and paste it here. And if you're using IntelliJ, it even shows you the color of what it is. And what the alpha value represents is the opacity of the, the text. So 255 is the max opacity, which means that it's going to be visible basically. And where the lowest number zero means how transparent you want it to be. So here I'm going to make it 200, which means that it'll be slightly less visible. So let's see it now. And yeah, so it's, it is, the color is, has changed. It changed to this greenish color and it, you can kind of tell that the, it became a little bit more transparent. So yeah, so that's the last way that we could change the color. So for here, we're just going to make it just stay white just because it's a lot easier to see. All right, let's say now we want to retrieve the value of our text from the J label for whatever reason. And we can do this by calling on the get text method. Here, I'm just going to output the value of the text by printing it out to the terminal. So let's launch the app. And yes, if we go to our terminal, we see that it says goodbye, which is what our current text is. But after we changed it using the set text method, let's take a look back into our window. And notice that when we change the, the size of our window, the label will always, is always going to be on the left side and centered into this window, but no matter what, and we can change this. So we can change the vertical and the horizontal alignment of our label. First, I'm going to show you the vertical alignment and we could use the set vertical alignment method where we can pass in swing constants center. So this is vertical. We can pass in top or bottom. Since the vertical is already centered or the vertical alignment is already centered for the label by default, we're going to try out top and let's see how that looks now. So now it's, at, it's always going to be at the top now. And I'll show you the three examples of the swing constants 
the different values for them on the screen right now so you can get a better idea of how that looks so next since there's we could change the vertical alignment we can also change the horizontal alignment and here we're going to make it centered since the left value is by default and also you could choose you could also set it to the right side as well but i'm going to choose center let's check it look at it now all right so let's resize the screen and yeah so now the label will always be centered and at the top so you Feel free to combine different combinations for these two values. I think what I like to do is try to center it because I think it looks nicer that way. So let's see how that looks real quick. So it's always going to be centered no matter how much we resize the screen. It's always going to be centered. And I think it just looks better in my opinion, just for this example. So next I'll show you guys how you could change the font of the label. And we do that by calling the set font method and then passing in an a font object and in the font object it takes in three parameters the font face the font style and then the font size for the font style there's three choices you have bold plain and italic and i'll have them up on the screen just to show you an example and then for the size it just changes the size of the font here we're going to make it big just to make it more noticeable. As for the font face, you can have the built-in fonts that you have in your computer. And here I'm just going to put in the code to print out all of the fonts that are available. And we're, gonna, and we're just going to call it real quick just to see, just to show you the different fonts available. And I'll choose a different one just to show an example. So first of all here, you can see the font changing and the text becoming really big, which is because we changed the size and it's also bolded. But if you look in our terminal, you can see the list of fonts that are available. And let's choose a different one just to um, see what happens. So I'm gonna choose, let's choose this one, Cambria. So I'm just gonna copy it. And then in this parameter here, where the font face is set, we're gonna paste in that new font. So we're gonna restart the app. So yeah, the font, you can see the font style changing or the font face changing. And yeah, so if you're interested in the type of fonts available, feel free to just pause this video here and then write this code down and then look through the different fonts that you wanna use. So I'm just gonna delete this for now because it's not important for the rest of this tutorial. And you know what, also let's change the background color of the window just to make the, the text more visible. Yeah, I think that looks way better. All right, let's say we don't want our label to be visible anymore and there will be a time when you want to use this. So let's say there's a certain action that happens and you want this label to disappear. Label also has the set visible method as well, similar to JFrame where we have, where we call it here to display the window. And I believe all swing components have this method. I may be wrong, but yeah. So if we set it to false, the label should not appear when we launch the program. And yeah, so now we don't see the picture or the text. Just something, you know, good to know. So let's close this for now. So one really cool feature that Swing has is that it actually supports HTML code. I think it just supports vanilla HTML code. I'm not too sure, but so basically we can utilize HTML tags in our Swing components. In this case, I'm going to be creating a string called HTML and then it's going to create this HTML code. It's going to create an unordered list with four bullet points. And in order to, in order for Swing to know that's HTML, we have to first include these opening HTML and closing tags. Then all we need to do is just set the text and pass in the HTML string as the parameter. All right, we need to set this to true first. Now let's launch the program. So yeah, so as you can see here, it has four bullet points and yeah, so I think this is really cool. So you could like use different um, tags, like the anchor tag to make it look like a link. And yeah, now it's quiz time. Question, how do we center the horizontal position of the text in RJ label? You have 15 seconds to answer the question. Leave your answer in the comments below. All right, time's up. The answer is D. Set horizontal text position and then we pass in jlabel.center. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and you want more. Next up, we'll be going over J button, so I'll see you guys then.